Figu Special Bulletin 47. Stonehenge, a mystic place. Or, when glorification is based on error, ignorance and suppositions. Author Hans Jorg Lanzendorfer, Switzerland 10th issue, April 2004. Wasserman Zeit Verlag, Billy Edward Albert Meyer. As every year around the 21st June according to the press report also in the year 2003 many worshippers of Stonehenge have arrived again to the summer solstice in South England. 30,000 people celebrate summer solstice in Stonehenge the 21st of July 2003 Stonehenge ape with drums and songs thousands of people celebrated the summer solstice and the night of Saturday in the prehistoric stone circle of Stonehenge. Almost 33 zeros druids, new agers and party enjoyers gathered for the spectacle. The visitors were especially lucky because unlike the previous years, the sky was clear this time and offered a clear view of the sunrise. Everyone has a lot of fun. The 61-year-old teacher Eileen Horner described the atmosphere in Stonehenge. The English Cultural Foundation, to which Stonehenge belongs, had announced last year a financial plan to rescue the stone circles. With £57 million, £82 million Euros the foundation wants to close an highway in the vicinity to build a tunnel for a second road and a less conspicuous visitor centre. The stone circle of Stonehenge was built between 1600 and 3000 years before Christ. Its precise purpose is unknown until today. With the sight of the masses that every year visit the old cult place, for me personally, stands the question of whether these peace-loving people, that see themselves as druids, new age followers or esoterics, would also continue to visit the place, if they knew about the real and bloody background of this place. Convinced that they are visiting a magic and powerful place, they flock every year with their idealistic views in masses in the area of Wiltshire. It is beyond doubt, that this place has, at least as a witness of the past times, a very fascinating magnetism and force of attraction. It is the unknown and enigmatic, the mysterious thing, the apparently immortal and the exceptional style of architecture, through which the people superficially allow themselves to be pulled into its spell. Erroneously on our planet the good old times and epochs bygone long ago are revered and longingly admired as ideals of social ways of life. In the past, they say, everything had been better and pleasant, peaceful and harmonious. The relics and stone witnesses from these past times are therefore gladly visited as a place of contemplation and supposed inspiration. Whether, thereby, these deal about old runic sepulchres, ruins, stone circles or about alleged places of power, such as old churches, stone circles or caves, is dependent on the mentality, the line of thought, or cultural-religious orientation of the believers. In the Christian culture places of pilgrimage such as Lourdes, Kevlar in Germany, Fleury Ranft in Switzerland or Wolberg in Bavaria, Germany and so forth have been going through an economic boom. Old and long time past cultures often revered as a symbol of unity and harmony. Especially when they are considered mysterious and Elysian, as the Mayas, the Celts or the Etruscans. In certain New Age and esoteric circles one gladly sees themselves as reincarnated druids, priests and female priests, princes, princesses and as alchemists or magicians of the past epochs. In the consciousness of the followers of the ancient cultures the deep barbarian and delusional sacrifice cults and human slaughterings of those groups and people often faded away or were glossed over with alleged mysticism or supposed secret knowledge. So ideal images are marketed and upheld, for example, by many Indian tribes of America although the truth is in fact that the women were suppressed by many ancient Indian tribes as working animals and were despised as well as the wildlife was damaged through a catastrophic hunting behavior and wantonness. In addition to that many lacked any relatedness to their environment and nature conservation was a foreign word for them. Contrary to popular belief were also carried out pointless hunts simply for fun and in the desire for killing. Even the highly praised Mayan culture was characterized by human sacrifice and sacrificial cults even if those facts are not liked to be heard and accepted. 
The true backgrounds of many histories are often hidden in the dark and in barbarism. Our history is full of traditional mistakes, lies and conscious adulterations of the value that often was increased for prestige reasons. In the 285th Contact Dialogue of the 2nd July 2000, in a conversation between Billy Edward A. Meyer and the extraterrestrial contact person Fleuran, the theme Stonehenge was dealt with, where she gave the following explanation. Florana says I have occupied myself in fact with the megalithic complex of Stonehenge. The site situated in the area of Wiltshire in southern England was built in several stages of construction, where almost concentric circles of massive stones and the rampart ring with a radial projection were inserted in an original ditch. It was actually firstly 30 stones as you said, namely in the outer ring. This consisted of four meters high stone pillars, that were united through deck stones or, as you name it, by horizontal beams. In this ring or circle there was a horseshoe-shaped settlement that consisted of five large doorway-type trilithons one. In the center of both circles, there was actually a structure, a large carved stone, which served respectively as an altar as well as a place of sacrifice and as a central observation and evaluation point for astronomical calculations. In addition, the whole thing was a worship site of religious barbaric form, where the altar played an important and very special role, because victims were offered on it, that not rarely was of human nature. The altar was in this way also a sacrificial stone. Furthermore the same altar and sacrificial stone was also used as executioner's stone, which means that not only human sacrifices were offered on it, but also executions took place in respect to those sentenced to death. Billy says then the whole thing was a cult site as well as an astronomy site and a place of slaughter at the same time. Florana says this is right, whereby is not to be forgotten, nevertheless, that there was also taught and was decided about right or wrong and with it also on life and death. Of course this is not realized by the many present-day visitors of Stonehenge that they admire and worship a place where death, delusional beliefs, murder and slaughter of human beings were the order of the day. Now, whether it is a question of condemnation or of human sacrifice of a delusional cult, the killing of people simply cannot be excused with the early culture or with the supposedly large and nevertheless unknown knowledge of the past. The unspeakable suffering that the sacrificed people had to go through, is now neither understandable nor describable. To be led to the altar tied up and defenseless in order to be brutally slaughtered as a sacrificial offering to any gods is neither reverence nor worthy of admiration. With absolute certainty, at the same time neither girls, boys, children nor adults were taken into consideration. Others on the other hand, had to be responsible for some actions, were possibly condemned to death innocently and as a result were executed in Stonehenge and deprived of life. It was not a place of evolving values and creative knowledge even if perhaps in small groups the smallest portions of creative perceptions were taught. Maybe, the same people who today, out of ignorance and admiration, worship the place as sacred were themselves executed at the time as other personalities, and were sacrificed. So let's turn back the wheel of time and take part in the human sacrifice rituals at Stonehenge the people are wild, combative and delusional believers. They fear the powers of the nature, and a human life can quickly be lost through foreign hand. Although some among them study the stars and watch their orbits, the people live in deep delusional belief in any gods demanding sacrifice. The people are not conscious themselves of the spirit evolutive creative lawfulness or of the consciousness related concerns. The reverence for the neighbor is relatively low and bloody feuds are fought. The people live in fear and anguish, in cult belief and deities worshipping and they maintain bloody rituals. In a highly consciousness, reasonable and intellectually developed culture which is conscious itself of the creative lawfulness and of the brotherly love and not brought any human sacrifice to any imaginary deities. Civilized, reasonable, respectful and reverent people would not stand it if their children, daughters and sons were suffocated, stabbed to death, slit open or bled on the altar for a barbaric and imaginary deity.
that today's pilgrims would be shocked about these proceedings if they were taken back in those times to be present in the rituals. They would be glad they could leave the place immediately again. Probably no one would voluntarily give themselves or their children, friends, loved ones or relatives into the hands of the sacrificing priests. Nevertheless, these former acts and the very purpose of the place is not taken into consideration and it is revered as mystical. However, how can a place of the torment and of the slaughtering be revered as sacred? The fact alone that also the astronomic laws of the universe were studied in Stonehenge does not excuse the other and barbaric utilization of the complex. On the other hand, many inhumane practices always preserve themselves on our world worldwide every day, thousands of people are being tortured, raped, mutilated, abused, imprisoned and eventually brutally murdered. If there, for instance, already had existed the human rights organization Amnesty International at that time of the active use of Stonehenge, then this place would have to go down in history as violator of human rights and none of the members would have come to the sense to maintain or adhere to a cult around this place. Stonehenge and other related places of power are witnesses of an often rude and hostile to man and to life epoch of delusional belief and barbarism. Therefore, they should fulfill their task only as contemporary witnesses of bygone times. In fact, however, they have no evolutive or creatively instructive values that would be of importance for the people of the modern era to emulate. For his spiritual and consciousness-related evolution the human being does not need neither stone cult buildings nor supposed mystic places and neither churches, chapels nor places of pilgrimage neither stone circles nor monoliths. The entire creation is for him witness enough of the creative work and creative power. His own consciousness is the most valuable instrument to the fulfillment of his task, the real sense of life, so namely the conscious learning to the perfection and evolution of creation. Hans Jorglans in Dorfer, Switzerland